G'day and welcome to another episode of Python for LEGO Robotics. Today we are going to make this awesome memory game using LEGO Spike Prime and Python Lists. There's something about the Game Master that makes it one of the least popular projects in class. Maybe because the face looks a little bit creepy with these gigantic lips and these hypnotic eyes. It's almost as if it's trying to tell you to do something. To code the Game Master, I'm going to teach you to use Python lists. And to do that, we're going to have to do some warming up. So if you've done coding with another programming language before, then you'll probably know a list as an array. And Python lists are pretty much the same. They are a collection of objects, and these can be integers, floats, or strings, or even other lists. I'm going to create a list of my favorite foods here. So here I'm going to go, uh, favorite foods and uh, a list is denoted by these square brackets. So if you press open square bracket, uh, then you can start typing the items inside your list. So these are my favorite foods, uh, spag, bowl, uh, pizza, and bangers and mash. Okay, so here are my favorite foods and make sure that you separate everything with a comma and because my favorite foods are strings, which means uh, an, another word for words, uh, I also need to put quotation marks around them. The most important thing about using lists is that you can access the items inside a list simply by using square brackets and putting the right index number inside. In a Python list, the first item uses the index of zero. The second item uses an index of one. The third item uses an index of two and so forth. If you wanted to go the other way and get the last item of a list, you can use negative indexes. So to get the last item of a list, you just use negative one. Uh, the second last item is negative two and so forth. All right, so here we're going to demonstrate how to retrieve an item in my list. Here, instead of uh, showing the image happy, I'm going to get the light matrix to actually write the first item in my list. So to do that, we go favorite, foods, open square bracket, zero, close square bracket. And then when I press play, uh, it should uh, get the first item in my list, which is spag bowl. Okay, right, so it is working. So uh, you should do the same thing with your robot. You can put down your favorite, uh, favorite foods into a list and then see if you can retrieve the right item from that list. The other cool thing about lists is that you can add things to the end of it by using something called the append method. So here, I'm going to look again at my code. And I'm going to add uh, an item at the end of my list. So favorite foods.append. And then if I put in my brackets uh, burgers, then uh, this uh, list will now have four items in the list. And I can also make it write it out by typing out negative one, which if you remember is the last item in the list. Okay, so if I hit pre uh, if I press play, burgers, right? So that's looking really, really good so far. Working with lists is super easy, right? But before we jump into the code, let's play a game in my brand new segment. To play songs in code, all you have to do is look at the clue that I've written in Python over here. This clue represents a popular song. Hmm, I wonder what this song can be. Write your guess and explain why in the comments section below. The comment that identifies the song title, the artist, and best explains the code will get pinned. 
All right, let's go back to the code. Now that we're familiar with lists, it's time to go into our code. So let's clear out all of our exercise and uh, you can rename your project to Python Game Master. And like always, you can find all this code in my GitHub link in the comments, uh, in the description below. So now we are going to create our color list. So here we go, color list equals open and close square bracket. So what this does is it creates an empty list. Okay, so normally we would fill this up with items, but we don't want to fill it up just yet. We're going to leave it blank because we want our game master to actually scan the blocks and add the colors in uh, dynamically. All right, after that, we're going to set our mouth motor. Here's motor A. And our scanner is a color sensor at motor B. Next, we're going to define a function. Now, to define a function, we use the DEF keyword, eat blocks. This is the function where the uh, game master is actually going to retrieve those game blocks uh, and gobble them up. So here, we go mouth.run for seconds, 2.1, comma, negative 50. So the first argument over here is the number of seconds that we're running for, and negative 50 is the speed at which we're running. Okay. Next, we're going to scan the colors. We'll actually define the code to scan the colors. So here, def scan colors. This is where we, uh, after you've eaten your blocks, after the game master has gobbled up the blocks, it's going to um, uh, spit out the blocks one by one to start scanning and adding those colors into the um, into the array or into the list. So for i in range five, this means that I'm going to do this for five times. Hub dot status light dot on. We're going to turn it on to a special color. Uh, the color is going to be scanner dot get underscore color. All right. So if you've seen one of my old color sensor uh, tutorials, you'll understand how this works. But basically, the status light is going to um, uh, light up with a string, and that string is either something like red, yellow, violet, blue, green, or whatever. Uh, and you can get that color by going uh, using the color sensor's get color method. Okay. At the same time, we're going to append that color to our list. So color list dot append scanner.get underscore color. Make sure you close all your brackets and make sure that you have these indentations correct as well. Mouth.run for degrees, 95 degrees at a speed of 50. So this is where we um, uh, have scanned our first block and now we're moving to the second block. So we get our mouth motor to spit out the next block. And then uh, we're going to go wait for half a second. And then we're going to also turn off the light, just so that we got a clear separation of the colors. Okay. All right, so that's looking good so far. Uh, we also need a third function, a third function to uh, replay the colors that we have scanned. Uh, and this is what uh, the lists are good for, because lists are great for us to keep a record of the colors uh, that we have scanned. And now we're going to use it to, um, uh, to uh, replay those colors. So define replay colors for i in range five again, hub.statuslight.on, and what are we going to do? We're looping through um, up to five again. So I is iterating through zero, one, two, three, and four. And what else is uh, starting at zero and ends in four? That's right, it's the color list, right? Because our, the indexes of our color list start at zero and end in four because there are five colors. 
So now all you have to do is go uh, hub.statuslight.on and then we'll just read out whatever is on this iteration of the color list. Just like that. Color list i, because i starts off at zero, so we, we'll, it will start off um, uh, turning the light on the zero width item in the list, and then one, and then two, and then three, and then four. Next we'll wait for another half second. And then we can turn the light off at the end. Okay, that's looking good. So now we're going. We've got all three of our functions. But having these functions defined is not going to actually make our robot move. It's because uh, we just defined the function. We haven't actually called the function or executed the function. So here we're going to actually execute the function now and. For this, we are going to use a loop while true. During this loop, we're going to check if we have pressed the left button or the right button. Pressing the left button will uh, scan the blocks. Pressing the right button will replay the blocks. Okay, so here, if hub dot left button dot is pressed. color list equals, so we are um, uh, blanking out the color list, and then we go eat blocks, and then we're going to scan each color by using our scan colors, and then we're going to wait for a second before we replay the colors. So uh, straight after we eat the blocks, we're going to go replay our colors. Otherwise, if we press the right hand side button, then uh, we're just going to replay the colors. So here, elif hub dot right button dot is pressed. And the length of color list is equal to five. Okay, so why am I doing this AND uh, operator? I want to make sure that when I press the right button, I also check if my color list is being populated. Because remember, when we start off, we have no, uh, no list of colors. So we are just putting uh, this check here to make sure that we only want to replay the colors if there is actually something in that list. Uh, and then if there is, we just go replay colors. Okay, super easy, uh, and uh, this code makes good use of lists as well. And now we're going to test it out to see if there are any errors. Running. Mm, no red light for me. All right, that's good. So let's have a look at my code, I mean, my robot. Okay, so here uh, is my robot. First of all, I'm going to uh, yep, I'm going to press the right button. Nothing's going to happen because there's nothing in the list. I put in my colored blocks and then I press the left button. Whoops. Whoops, let's do that again because uh, I couldn't, didn't eat the blocks properly. Whoops. Okay, here we are. Let's do that again. Here we go. Now that's proper. All right, so it's green, blue, purple, red, yellow. Okay, good. So now, uh, and then it replays the colors uh, as well. And then now if I press the right hand button, it's going to also replay the list again. Okay, so how you'd play this game is you'd probably uh, scan it, uh, scan one person's uh, string of blocks, and then play the, uh, um, play the colors, and then see if the uh, other person can rebuild the same sequence using their color blocks. I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, More Educational. 
Ever since Creator Academy started making LEGO Education videos, we have been greatly supported by the experts at More Educational. They are an authorized partner of LEGO Education with over 20 years experience working with LEGO Education products. So if you're in Australia and you want to buy genuine LEGO Education products like the ones shown in this video, then make sure you check out the More Educational website. That's it from me today. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.